Hi guys, Brain here, and welcome to another commentary video. This video is kind of going to be the sister video to the video we put out at the beginning of the week, which are indoor maps inherently bad. This one's going to tackle something else I'm going to do with maps, this time map offerings in specific. Because this is something that I also kind of don't have a very, very firm, like, stance on, but I kind of really do see the opinion on map offerings from both sides. Because some people think map offerings are inherently bad, and I can definitely see why, and I've definitely experienced why map offerings are inherently bad. But also, there's kind of a lot that we miss out on if we end up do taking out map offerings. So let's go ahead and talk about kind of the two main ideas that go along with the whole controversy over map offerings. So map offerings inherently are brought usually to make the other side miserable. And it may not be maliciously so. It may not be like, I really want the other team to have a bad time. Sometimes it is. But a lot of the time, people just prefer certain maps. But usually the map offerings that people bring into maps are exclusively to benefit their side. This goes for both Survivor and Killer. They both like to bring maps that uniquely benefit their side or their strategy that they're going for. Obviously, you see on the Survivor side of things, people like to bring Gideon's Meat Packing Plant, which is infamously known for its highly staggering amount of 25 average ballots most of which are safe, which makes it very hard for killers to deal with it literally at all. They'll bring Cold Wind, which always has usually really strong setups, even if you get something like Rotten Fields or Abattoir. They're gonna have a lot of resources like the Cow Tree and usually a good main building to boot as well. Basically bringing the map offerings to basically kind of guarantee a, a, a higher chance of, of getting the win, getting higher results. But killers do this too, as well. Obviously the most common use of this is stealth killers bring indoor maps, because usually stealth killers suffer from the fact that line of sight really kind of debilitates their powers. But if you obviously if you block that line of sight, suddenly they become way, way, way stronger. But even more so, killers like to bring maps that specifically benefit their specific killer powers. For example, if you're running somebody like Huntress, you may want to bring like Azeroth's or Macmillan's because Azeroth's and Macmillan's have tiles that you can shoot your your shots over, whether that be like Desolate or Huntress, etc. You want to bring them to those maps, that way you have a better chance of using your power. And this expands further once you start getting into specific builds, such as having, you know, Scratch Mirror Myers on Larry's in specific. That way you can use the indoor setup in order to get that wall hacks and actually get results on usually a very, very weak add-on. So I guess if there's a TLDR, if you haven't really paid attention up to this point for some reason, the main thing I'm trying to say here is map offerings are always brought to benefit the side that brought them. Map offerings usually aren't brought for a sense of fun or a change of setting. Most map offerings are brought in order to kind of like get a win for no effort on your part. <laughs> like all you did was play a play a card at the beginning of the match bring an offering and that's it. And now you have a much, much higher chance of winning for basically no reason. Basically just because you brought an offering into the match. And I know what people are saying is like, just bring a sacrificial reward, idiot. But sacrificial rewards are a green add-on. They are expensive and you can't be bringing one every single match just so you can have a fair match. But that's, that's just not, that's, that's just, you can't, it's not realistic. You can't do that realistically. You can't bring a, a sacrificial reward every single match to try and guarantee a more fair match for you. You just, it's not realistic. You can't do that. However, the flip side of this argument is obviously kind of a, a, what I alluded to before is that there are some, there are some perk builds that are literally not viable unless you go to a specific map. Remember we mentioned Scratch Mirror Myers earlier. Scratch Mirror Myers is extraordinarily slow with an extraordinarily tiny lunge, but he has wall hacks. Now, if you're on a big map, this does essentially nothing for you because you don't have the ability to snake up on people because you don't have a lot of cover. So essentially you're just a slower guy with, with a shorter lunge that uh, even though he has wall hacks, it doesn't really matter that much. It, it really like you're not going to be able to get the results if you're on an open map. So you have to bring something like Larry's or Midwitch in order to get value off of that specific add on. And obviously, if you decide to make map offerings dead, if you make them go the way of the dodo, you can't be running stuff like like Scratch Mirror anymore because it's just such a huge risk. There's very few indoor maps in the game, and some of the indoor maps like like the meat packing plant that we mentioned and RPD don't even matter for people like like Scratch Mirror Myers because they're so huge and there's a lot of safe pallets. So it's just kind of like you just kind of can't make it work, even though it is technically an indoor map. So you kind of have to say goodbye to builds like that 
if you say goodbye to map offerings because nobody's going to be trying out there going okay big money big money big money and, and betting and just praying that they get the uh, map offering that they can actually use their add-on on otherwise it's just completely useless and obviously this is the other part that's a little bit more just of an emotional reason sometimes people just want to change a venue you know dbd does that we've all been there where for some reason it's picking the same map five times in a row some one day you'll be playing killer and for some reason you're just getting ormond like seven times in a row even though it's not like nobody's map offering you there it's just the game has just randomly decided hey you're going to ormond seven times today bud and you're just like please just send me somewhere else and you can you can just use it you slap down an offering you say yep i'm going somewhere else now and then you don't have to deal with it right so obviously if map if you take map offerings away that's obviously not going to be a thing anymore which is uh not great, <laughs> not great at all. So yeah, those are kind of the two idea sets on are map offerings bad or are they good? Do you think map offerings should be taken out of the game or do you think they add enough fun and aren't as detrimental so they should just stay in the game? Let me know down in the comments below about that. It's gonna be it for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Other than that, it's gonna be it for today's video. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow, friends. But if I don't, I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.